Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Let me introduce you. Uh, Junior will talk about Verify Fact with Open API. Let's Hi. give him a hand. Thank you. So thanks a lot for this introduction. So we are going to talk about verified fakes for Open API. But before that, a small thing. So I'm working for Yelp, and we are also sponsoring the social event tonight, which I hope you're all going to enjoy. Uh, what Yelp mission is, is help you find uh, restaurants, businesses around you, the nice plumber, and some people you can trust. We are a fairly big Python shop. We have a very huge number of services, SOA, and that's why we are very often talking at your Python, PyCon D, about Bravado, APIs, and this kind of things. So just small introduction. The talk is verified fake with open API. So who has heard ver about verified fakes before? Raise your hand. Yes, two, three, four, OK. And who has used or heard of open API before? Yes, a lot more. So I guess when it's in the title. <laughs> It helps. Cool. So I will go into a bit more detail what it is. So the first question is, why do you need verified fake? And I think it's because we are all a bit lazy. Um, when you write tests for the code, I hope you write tests. And if you do, you all, especially with Python, with such a nice utility as mock, you always end up uh, mocking things in your tests. Like, it's very, 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 very rare that you have a full production system with all the APIs and all the things you rely on without, at some point, mocking some of the calls. And it's very good. That's what allows you to write quick and efficient testing. But what happens in time is uh, the mocks become outdated. Some of the API change. Things evolve around you. Your software does not live in a closed little bubbles where nothing changes. And that's when problems arise. The main problem that you're going to encounter is, hey, your mocks become outdated, and nothing is going to tell you that this just happened until your production side just starts showing signs of errors. I see people front row doing this. It happens in real life. Do, it's, it's real things. Um, a corollary to this is like, even if you own all of the APIs, it's not that easy to find out all the places where all the people and the larger the organization is, the worse it gets, where people are actually mocking your calls and to warn them that, hey, this is coming. Um, also, I, again, the fact that developers are developers and there is a deadline, um, we tend to mock too many things. So you might lose some of the information, some of the syntactical, some of the validations. And basically, mocks, if they are not written inaccurate or incorrect from the get-go, they have a huge tendency to become inaccurate in time. So verified fakes aim to solve this kind of issue. And according to Martin Fowler's, uh, they should follow these three wonderful properties. The first one it is they should provide the same interface as a real implementation, which sounds fairly logical. Like mocks should also provide as close an interface. Use autospec if you can. They should be testable in the same way, the real, of, as the same sense as a real implementation. And ideally, but I would kind of not remove this idea and make this a stronger constraint, they should be maintained alongside the real implementation. So your f this fake version you're generating should be very part of what you provide when you provide the library. Some people have done this kind of talk. There is a very good Euro Python talk from this year about this. You can also check it out. Um, so now that we have talked a bit about generic thing about verified fakes, what this talk is going to focus on is building a verified fake for a web service and a web service that uses open API. Disclaimer, if you do not know what open API is, you will very soon. And it's, the idea is very valid for any form of API specification you might have. So I have said open API several times. What is open API? It's a RESTful um, specification that basically aim at making the web services API clearer, more documented, and uh, tackles problem as documentation and validation, which are the most uh, one which we're going to be interested in right now. But it also helps with API discovery and all of these things. You say, hey, 
I've never heard of this before. Is this really used? Yes, it is, not just by Yelp. A lot of people are doing this. Most of the Google APIs are available in, uh, through um, open API specification. Microsoft, Amazon Web Services, uh, Slack, Lyft, I'm passing, I think for German people here, Dutch Bahn is here, so you can know how late are the train and extract all of the data in one go. And a Stack Exchange, all list is available online. Uh, quick notice right now, uh, this project was not always called OpenAPI, it was also called Swagger, and you will hear me uh, mistake one for the other very often. I apologize in advance, but it, I just can't, it's just too hard. <laughs> cool. Uh, enough talking, let's look at real things. So um, that's what a Swagger, uh, starting, an OpenAPI <laughs> specification is, it looks like. It defines some things like as which version of the specification you're implementing against, what comes in the API, here JSON, what comes out of your service, here JSON again, um, which is the version of the, that this, of the API that this file is currently describing, and then all of the endpoints are described one by one. Here it's a very simple version of the simple version of, which is an example on the Swagger website. And it's basically an API that allows you to recover pet by their ID. You will notice the restful design of it. Um, I think what's a few things which could be important is you will notice there is an operation ID, which is show pet by ID, and that's a unique identifier for one endpoint. There is where the specification actually enforces this to be unique. And then all the elements which are coming in or out of the API are specified and typed, which means when you look at this, you can have a guess that, yes, you can generate code automatically that validates this API or create objects, and it makes it very, this once so HTTP-like request now feels very like objects and all of this. It's very practical. I must admit, like,